Last week I showed you how my first round qualifying went here in Belgium where I won 7675 against Raphael Kauzi, an ATP ranked singles player. This week I'm going to show you how the rest of my qualifying draw went where I'd have to win three matches to get through to the main draw to play for an ATP point. I will jump in here on Monday where I was warming up with Lucien. The courts were pretty damp having had two days of rain so the courts were, were playing pretty slow and the balls were fluffing up loads. Uh, today I'd have two matches if I were to win so I knew it was going to be a long day so almost said to myself be quite aggressive in this first match especially at the beginning trying to go for serve and volley see if that tactic works um, but yeah I had a pretty good warm-up and then jumped into my match against Ruben Hartig a German player also fighting for his first ATP points uh, ranked around 500 uh, on the ITF ranking so winning a lot of matches in the qualifying draws and a similar ranking to me in doubles around 13 1400 so it was gonna be a tough match um, I think that being a German player he played on clay courts a lot more than I have um, but I definitely wanted to try and start off being aggressive I think that um, you know rallying the ball would just kind of cause both of us to fatigue or at least me to fatigue especially in these slow conditions uh, and that's when the errors start to creep in and and you begin to you begin to, to falter a little bit especially if you have two matches in one day playing really really long grindy match isn't really what you want especially if I were to win this I'd play the seed number one in qualifying who had a pretty quick match on the other on the other quarter of the of the draw. You know, two all, I think that I was definitely trying to get on my forehand side as much as possible, come in with a little drive volley there, dropping a little bit shorter so that, you know, you have to move up and back on the court and not just side to side. But my opponent gets a break point here pretty early on uh, in this uh, in this first set and definitely not, not what we want, um, you know, very early on. But, you know, I was just trying to be aggressive with the forehand and I just overcook that forehand slightly and give my opponent the break. And from this point, he gained a lot of confidence. He began to play really well, some really solid shots. Uh, putting the ball really deep in the court and um, yeah, giving him that break really early on was was costly for me. As you can see, that momentum carried through for him, getting a double break in this first and finding myself 5-2 down. Definitely not an ideal start. I didn't feel like I was being outclassed necessarily. I just felt like I was kind of missing the opportunities to take the points and just being a little bit too defensive. So just trying to mix it up on that backhand be a little bit more aggressive, find myself at 40 love here on his serve to get at least one break back in this in this set. And uh, yeah, definitely think that kind of coming forwards and, and closing it out on the first volley was definitely doing a better job for me um, in this service game as well, trying to go with the big serves. A bit indecisive on that volley, but managed to, to play it off pretty well and go up to 5-4. Uh, to and here, you know, I've got a chance to break him and take it to five all in this first set. He plays a very solid game and I just gift him that set point there. Very, very frustrating. I, d I definitely think that I had my chances, but I was just being a little bit too, I guess, relaxed isn't the right word, but just too, too unconcentrated on those key moments. I think I needed to be a bit more clinical like this with my forehand, really try and put the pressure on and focus on every single ball. Um, I definitely don't think I should have lost that first set, but I came out in the second with a different mindset, a different focus. Um, again, my opponent getting break point chances pretty early on. He was able to put those returns super close to the baseline. Um, but definitely just trying to be a little bit more solid on these points, not make as many stupid unforced errors. And um, yeah, finding, finding my rhythm a little bit in the second set and just saying to myself, look, there's a there's a there's best of three sets for a reason. You know, if you get to a match tie break, anything can happen. So yeah, just hang on and bide buy your time and look for your chances and and really hit that forehand as much as possible and just stay solid on the backhand. That long point there to break really reinforced that that patience and that confidence which I really had and and going forwards at kind of 3-1-30 love I was coming forwards more winning more points like this and um, yeah taking a pretty healthy lead in the second set. Uh. 
I go third love down at the beginning of of my own service game here and, and just again a few really relaxed unforced errors just being a bit too confident being 4-2 up and I give him the break back to go 4-3 and now it's anyone's for the taking. I definitely think that my concentration in this match wasn't great. I was making a lot more unforced errors than I would have liked but some some days is like that. Some days you, you know you go out there and you know you're not playing your best but you have to try and find a way to win so you know what I was telling myself here was just kind of stick with it try and try and get to a tie break yeah if worse comes to worse and you can't manage to, to find a break um, and just be really patient and then go fight it out and pff, shots like that was was just unacceptable to be honest it's embarrassing looking at but uh, I said to myself try and try and hit a few smashes in this next game to reinforce that confidence because that was just terrible um, but as you can see here, again, looking to come in, making two good smashes, reinforcing my confidence again and going up 5-4 um, and at least taking it to, um, well, hopefully a tie break here. Um, but yeah, I was returning pretty good. I think it was just the fact that I was, uh, you know, just, just struggling to, to find a way in his service games because he was playing some good points. And this game here at 5 was super important to, to try and hold because, uh, you know, this is a game you definitely don't want to lose and at least it's going to send us to a, a set tie break. As that ball travels past and then we're into a set tie break here, first seven points. And now it's all about just hustling and finding a way. Great passing shot, gave me some good confidence to begin this uh, this set tie break. But I knew it was going to be a little bit nervy, a little bit a little bit tight. Um, you know, getting a little bit lucky there with that shank. Um, I definitely think that, you know, I knew he was going to be super solid. So I knew that I'd kind of have to be the one dictating if I wanted to have a good chance because realistically uh, my game isn't really built around being like a defensive baseliner and a grinder so um, I knew what I kind of had to do which was you know hit my forehand solid on the backhand switch it up and I go 4-2 up in this uh, in the second set tie break my opponent is being a lot more aggressive he's coming forwards to the net a lot more which I did notice um, which I didn't mind to be honest because I think that coming forwards I, I felt good like passing and hustling and trying to find a way um, to get the ball past him but you know he was definitely putting the pressure on me um, you know 5-4 here uh, another huge point. Uh, I think this was an absolute grind of a rally, so I really just wanted to, to stay solid, but eventually fatigue was setting in, having already played for kind of over two hours, I think. I think what I would have liked to have seen is a bit more decisiveness there because that is just being caught in no man's land. I just need to come forwards there and commit to it. And I think at a key key moment, um, you know, that's just a little bit indecisive. But my opponent, great approach shot, great volley here at five all. I just say, just scramble, get it up, and he thankfully misses the smash for me and gives me a, a set point here at six five. There we go. I've nearly pretty much stolen that second set there and going through to this tie break, there's almost nothing to lose. Um, I definitely think that, you know, I was, uh, I felt confident in the tie breaks now having having won that set tie break. So as we go kind of to four all in this second, in this match tie break, as the nerves were high, I felt kind of quietly confident that if I could just stick to what I was doing, maybe draw them into the net a little bit, that I'd have my chances. There you go, I forced the error to go 8-6 up on serve here. And from here, I kind of just said to myself, just be a brick wall, really try and move the ball around, make him get under pressure. I get a short ball here at, to go 9-6 up. And at 9-7, got my first match point. There we go, managed to win that second round quality, securing another ITF point to put me up the rankings on the ITF. And I played for a chance to qualify for the main draw. Yes, guys, so managed to get the win there in that match. Uh, I'm super happy with how I, you know, managed to mentally come back in that one. It wasn't easy. Um, obviously, you know, lost the first set, wasn't playing great tennis, and then found a way to hang in there in the second and take it. Um, playing again in about an hour against the seed number one in qualies, of course. Uh, so I want to get some food in me, get prepared, and uh, yeah, excited to play for a spot on main draw.
Now on the final round of qualies, I had the privilege of playing against the C number one in qualies, uh, Stein Slump. Um, yeah, a Dutch player, very, very, uh, a co well, college player who was very, very uh, tricky to play against, I want to say. He had a interesting kind of technique, one-hander, very spinny. Yeah, it was a, a very consistent player and on, on these courts really made it difficult for me with the angles. Um, I start off pretty good with these new balls, trying to find a way to put some pressure on him, really force him into some errors at the beginning of this match. I know that my, I'm not going to really be able to, to go kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe consistency wise having just played like a two and a half hour match already. Um, you know, he, he got his match done pretty quickly so I knew kind of aggression was going to be my friend here. Um, but obviously like you can see the ball just absolutely spinning away from me all the time against him so it was definitely a, a different type of opponent to the one I literally just played. So um, definitely just trying to get on the forehand as much as possible, move the ball inside out, inside in really put him under some pressure and get some confidence on my forehand. And as you can see, it was raining as well as we were playing, so the courts were kind of playing super slow, super damp, and you, know, you had to be careful a bit with the movement in the corners to make sure that you weren't falling over or tripping or sliding or doing anything, doing anything stupid. But as you can see here, on serve 2-1, um, you know, just looking for an opportunity to try and break early on, give myself a little bit of scoreline score pressure on him, but he liked to come in and be aggressive as much as possible, so I knew that you know, on, on my return games, I might have to be a little bit more aggressive off the return. I think that's one of the things that I have been working on a lot is like that, just going for it a little bit because, you know, you just need one break in the set to, to really put the pressure on. So there's no point just bunting in four returns and him winning all the points. You might as well be a bit aggressive, a bit more aggressive than usual in the return games. He puts in a very, very solid serve there, back of the line at, at 30 all, and then another race at, at 40-30. So... You know, snuffing out my chances there of an early break, even though I played a solid game. Uh, you know, but here I said to myself, look, just stay consistent, uh, just just keep it on serve, and uh, yeah, I was playing good. I was being aggressive. I was moving the ball well. I was being consistent with the backhand, forcing him to come into the net and play a few kind of passing shots like that. Um, you know, at the beginning of this match, I felt pretty confident. Great volley for my opponent there, and a nice drop shot to save a break point pretty early on. Um, I managed to to go and hold this game as well, which gave some good confidence. And at this point, at three all, I kind of this volley here literally pained me just back of the line out, um, and that just set the precedent for this game, where he then played a really really solid point at 15 love down to go 30 love up and another solid return there to to take it to love 40. And how quickly I've suddenly gone down, and I was I was furious at myself. So I've kind of gifted him the break here uh, and he does take it and goes 4-3 and um, you know, when you go, go down a break against these solid players it's really an uphill battle um, especially kind of having played that match and the legs feeling pretty heavy I knew it was going to be a really tough challenge to, to try and come back here in this set especially with just how consistent he was and how easily he just get on the forehand and rip it and, but nevertheless you know I said to myself look let's just, just play one point at a time one game at a time maybe he gives you an opportunity maybe he gives you a chance I believe in the qualifying of like these futures tournaments, anything can happen. I've played enough matches to know that you know, I, I can sometimes lose concentration, they can lose sometimes lose concentration. And as you can see, giving him that first set and at this point I was a little bit disheartened. I did say to myself, look, let's not give up, let's 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 keep fighting. Um, but I think my head was slightly gone, if I'm being really honest, uh, which you kind of have to be in these in, in these moments, you know. He was serving good and playing really well, and I just think I didn't have enough fight in me on this day, but necess didn't necessarily mean I wasn't, you know, going to fight. I just knew that it was going to be, you know, really tough, but, you know, just said to myself, look, let's just hang in on every game, hang in on every point. Um, you know, <laughs> again, you never know what's going to happen. Um, I could just feel my energy, energy level, <laughs> energy level slightly kind of dropping at the beginning of this set. And watching it back now, you can definitely see that coming through on, on, on camera. I wish I would have been a little bit more aggressive. Um, just if my energy is dropping, be a little bit more aggressive because usually when I am being aggressive, I'm not going to lose that many points. It almost favors favors my game style a little bit. So um, yeah, that's what I kind of would have said to myself. But a lot of games here, kind of 40-30. Um, you know, long games where I'm getting chances but just not quite able to to execute. 
Getting a break point here at 2-1. Um, a really good opportunity to, to kind of get back into it at the beginning of this, uh, this second set. Um, you know, him moving, moving me around, getting me on the stretch and, and putting that slice wide. Um, maybe would have liked to have seen me just absolutely tank a forehand, really big middle and see what would have happened because, you know, um, with these types of guys, if you just stay consistent and put in deep balls on a clay court, that's not really going to be good enough because the ball's moving so slow in these, in these kind of damp conditions. But you need to do kind of a little bit more than, uh, more, more than just kind of make the ball with good depth and consistency. And he holds that game to go three level up and you can just see I was frustrated, exhausted. I was, uh, yeah, annoyed that I gave him that game, to be honest. He played obviously some great tennis, but I felt like I deserved to, to take that game. But he's just running away with the set at this point, kind of four love up. I think that I, uh, he, he kind of broken me a little bit. I think that six love, four love down, you're kind of getting battered. It's never a nice feeling. Um, and then lots of kind of thoughts like, why am I placing seed number one? Why is this happening? Um, kind of start coming into your head and it gets very kind of negative very quickly so uh, you know in this game I tried to be a little, little bit more relaxed being five love down and I think that began to work actually um, I began playing some really good tennis in these last kind of one or two games um, but yeah I think it, it, it's okay sometimes to just accept that you're having days where you're not playing your best tennis and it's number one about finding a way to deal with it and number two accepting that that's happening to then try and play better um, you know on that day as well because I think in the first match I was able to kind of get over it but now that I'm playing a, a much higher caliber of opponent I really uh, you know I'm struggling to, to win those key points and, and execute in the key moments and that's essentially why I've lost this match you know 6-3 six, 6-1. Six, So that's it. Unfortunately, lost in the final round of qualifying here. My opponent did end up going to, to take ATP points in the main draw. But lots of positives to take from this week. Now it's time to move to hard courts.